people who are, are leading this great state of Nevada. I'm certainly honored to also be in you guys' presence. And I want to share uh, the reasons why I'm involved uh, in this industry and in my advocacy for marijuana policy reform. Uh, but two things that I am very uh, expert in are cannabis for pain and cannabis for brain. Uh, I, I, I guess in, in terms of perspective, you can consider me a patient advocate. Uh, I've been playing football almost my entire life. Uh, this upcoming season, will be my 19th year playing in general, my eighth season playing professionally. Why, why do people love football? Because it's intense. Because they're big hits almost every play that are exciting. They get you standing out of your chair, screaming at your TV. You love to see it. You love to see the quarterback set up, throw the ball, and get blasted from his blind side. Hopefully that doesn't happen while I'm on the field. <laughs> and, and football is so powerful in our country people who are playing the game are experiencing a great deal of chronic pain and injury that most people don't want to hear about, right? Football players are paid a lot of money. They're, they're well compensated for what they do. But what people don't understand is the great deal of traumatic stress and injury that happen every time you see one of those big hits. Whether someone's laid out unconscious from sustaining a concussion or they're pushing through injuries that you cannot see. Uh, and this happens to me particularly almost every play. I play on the offensive line and there's literally a car crash every time. Every time the ball is snapped, my head is smashing into the head of the defensive lineman. And we now know that this is causing a great deal of trauma for our brains. And this is something that when I started playing this game, this fact was unknown. It wasn't talked about at all. Uh, as I played longer, concussions became more of a big deal. Uh, the game is getting faster, players are getting stronger. You see parents that, if some of you have kids, you may even have your children specializing in football training at the age of five years old. Well, the game is going to continue to evolve. Players will continue to be stronger, and these hits are more devastating every time. So you would expect us to just accept this, and we do. We're trained to. We're trained to overcome adversity, and play through a great deal of pain, things that many of you in these seats have no idea what it would be like to experience, let alone going to work, but performing athletically at the highest level. Plays and hits that wear on your joints and muscles and, and ultimately also your brain. Head traumas are causing the onset of early brain issues that we shouldn't see in guys that are 40 years old. We shouldn't see in guys that are 30 years old. Uh, these are issues that normally rear themselves uh, for people who are in a later stage of life. It's a process just to wake your body up and get out of bed because of all the accumulated stress on, on, on my joints. Uh, walking up and down stairs, I've had one knee repaired three times. Uh, bending over, just playing with my kids. Uh, picking my kids up, I have three kids, four, two, and one month old. And at times, depending on training or practice during that day, it's difficult to even be able to enjoy family life because I'm dealing with such a high level of stress and pain. And that's part of you know why I'm advocating so openly because you guys don't get to experience or, or even understand what that's like. You see the end product. You see us battling on the field, which is awesome. And I love to do it. I'm not complaining by any means. Uh, in terms of pain, I know what I signed up for, but particularly in terms of my brain health, I had no clue that I was accumulating brain damage at such a rapid rate. To mitigate that pain, there is a process. So players are in pain every day, every play, and we have to stay on the field. It's our job. So NFL teams have to find a process that will allow us to continue to perform and push through this pain, and it's done by pharmaceuticals. It's done by prescribing us different uh, opioid drugs that you see I've listed, hydrocodone, oxycodone, oxycontin. Those are drugs that I've been prescribed personally. Uh, and a great deal of anti-inflammatory drugs too, like Celebrex, Catamaran, Indocin, Toradol, uh, which I explicitly uh, wrote about in a piece that I, I wrote for the Players Tribune. Toradol is a drug that's prescribed for players before the game even happens to mask the pain that's ensuing on that day. And it's so powerful that you may be injured and not feel it 
for a day or two later after the drug wears off. And these are drugs that players are consuming and prescribed by their doctors every week, every day during the season. The climate of prescribing opioids in football mimic what's going on countrywide, but in fact, it's, it's more detrimental because we experience a great deal of chronic pain and chronic injury at a rate higher than the general population. So we're prescribed these dangerous pharmaceuticals much more frequently than the general population. And it's a problem. We see former players speak openly about their addiction issues to these pills while they play and also when they're not playing anymore because one, that pain that, and those injuries that they sustain during their career continue after they're done. Once you stop playing football, it doesn't stop hurting. I believe that in cannabis, we have something that's far safer than the opioids that we're being prescribed as athletes. We know that cannabis is safer. It's less addictive than these opioids. And people are even breaking their addiction to opioids by using cannabis. We need to take We need to take a serious look at this. We need hardcore research like Dr. Sue Sisley is pursuing to show us whether or not this is something real, but we know through evidence that people are being healed by using cannabis all over our country, here in the state of Nevada and in other states as well. The NFL shouldn't test players for marijuana. They shouldn't. It's far safer than the drugs that they're currently prescribing us players at mitigating pain, at dealing with issues that are not talked about, anxiety, depression, things that you hear former players talk about, but current players are afraid to because we're warriors, we're gladiators. No one wants to hear about your pain. No one wants to hear about your anxiety for the upcoming game. No one wants to hear about the depression you experience when you're released from a team and your life's work is in the balance. No one wants to hear about that. But we do know that people are experiencing a great deal of relief for some of those very things in cannabis. So I'm fully supportive of any and all research that's going to show whether or not, like, like Sue said, is this good? Is this bad? If you think it's bad, let's find out if it's bad. Let's, let's not block the ability to look at this any longer. And if you believe that, that these patients are telling you the truth, that they're receiving great benefits from this, Let's find out why. Let's find out exactly what pathways cannabis is working in our bodies to present these great benefits to everyone who said that they've experienced it in their lives.